Hello, my name is Laura the Librarian. I work for Tower Hamlet School Library Service and today I thought I would introduce you to the oldest known version of Cinderella. This story is actually ancient Greek in origin and we have taken a little, little tour around ancient Egypt as well while we're at it. It is called Cinderella of the Nile. Okay, it's by Beverly Naidu and illustrated by Marjan Vafayan and is published by Tiny Owl Publishing. Okay. Long, long ago, when pirates freely roamed the seas around Greece, a beautiful baby girl was born in a village to the north. She had eyes like sapphires and fine red curls. The happy parents, who'd waited many years for this child, called her Rodolphus because her cheeks were so rosy. Rodolphus was a kind child who loved milking the goats and helping to make cheese. She collected water from the well, fed the chickens, and did everything her parents asked with a smile. You are our treasure, they said. However, other villagers whispered that her greatest treasure was her hair, the colour of the finest sunset. As Rodolphus grew, word of her unusual beauty spread over the mountains. Her parents thought they were safe living far away from the sea, but news of their red-haired daughter reached a band of pirates. A girl like this could be sold for a fat bag of silver coins. So it was that one afternoon, a bandit silently watched Rodolphus herd the family's goats up the mountain. She sang sweetly, Hurry up, my pretty ones, no wolves are near, I'll chase them away with my stick here. When Rodolphus drew near, the bandit leaped out and grabbed her. Mama! Papa! she cried, but the bleating of the goats drowned her voice. For days and nights, Rodolphus stumbled up and down mountain paths, bound by a rope. At the end of the fifth night, she felt her legs would give way. But just as the sun began to rise, she saw a sheet of silver stretching ahead as far as the sky on the other side. The bandit grinned. You're going over the sea, my pretty one. If my eyes see true, that ship there comes just for you. Down by the sea, a bright blue kingfisher landed on a rock beside Rodolphus and cocked its head. Quickly, she plucked a few strands of her hair. The kingfisher neatly grasped them from her hand. Through her tears, she sang softly, Little bird, you can fly, you are free. Tell my parents you saw me by the sea. My village lies in those mountains there. You'll hear their cries. Please give them my hair. She barely finished her song when the bandit seized her and waded into the water with Rodolphus like a sack over one shoulder. By the time she could turn her head, there's no sign of a little kingfisher. Night and day, the boat rolled and swayed. Rodolphus stayed curled like a mouse between two chests. Then one night, a storm sent huge waves crashing over everyone, and she thought they would all drown. Yet, when the morning star arrived, the sea was calm. Rodolphus was silent as the pirates cheered, and she heard them shout, Land! Land! A pirate shook her. Soon we arrive in Samos. Get up! Get up! They were sailing towards a piece of land surrounded by sea. Rodolphus was sold to the highest bidder and by midday trembled before the man who had bought her. Too scared to look up, she heard him say, She is as beautiful as I was told. Her duties were to serve him and tend to his wife's garden. It was light work, and Rodolphus soon learned to do it well. However, her heart remained heavy. Now there was one field slave who was allowed inside the house. Rodolphus often found the master sitting and listening to him. His name was Aesop, and he was a storyteller. Aesop reminded Rodolphus of her father, who loved telling stories about wolves, bears, and other animals that lived in the mountains. One day, entering the room, Rodolphus overheard her master complain, oh, My red-haired girl's beautiful, but she doesn't smile! Embarrassed, she quickly left. Later, while watering a rosebush in the courtyard, she became aware of Aesop watching her. He pointed to a tree. You have a friend, he said. Rodolphus looked up and saw a tiny owl. Oh, little grey one, she whispered, and for the first time in many weeks, she smiled. 
From then on, whenever she wasn't busy, Rodolphus would search outside for Aesop. She helped him feed the chickens, milk the goats, and make cheese. She told him about her goats and the little grey owl that lived under the roof of her parents' house, and Aesop taught her about the wildlife of the island. He also told her stories that made her smile. However, when she returned to the master's house, so too did her sadness. This went on for some time until one day the master became very angry. You have an easy life in my household, yet you will not smile for me, he shouted. Even Aesop could not calm him. Soon afterwards, the master announced that he'd sold his red-haired slave to a merchant who was travelling to a city near Kratis, in Egypt. Poor Rodolphus ran out the house to find Aesop. Although her friend could not stop her being taken away, he told her a fable. Okay, a fable is like a really short story, but it usually has a moral attached to it, like a lesson to learn. Aesop, you might have heard of before already, because he wrote a lot of fables. Uh, stories like The Tortoise and the Hare, that was one of his, one of his fables. Poor Rodophis ran out of the house to find Aesop. Although her friend could not stop her being taken away, he told her a fable. An oak tree boasted that it was stronger than the reeds along the bank of a river. That night, the mighty tree was uprooted in a storm and crashed to earth. The next morning, the reeds were still standing. We know how to bend, they whispered to the tree. Night and day, wild waves battered the boat, saying to Egypt. Huddled among other frightened young captives, Rodolphus remembered Aesop and sang to herself, Blow, wind, blow, I promise to be strong. Watch me bend, not break my little song. At last, the boat entered a wide river with tall green reeds on each side. As the shaking and shuddering stopped, a sailor cried out, The great Nile welcomes us! Give thanks! The next day, a slave master herded the captives off the boat at the port of the Kratis and led them to a busy park marketplace. Never had Rodolphus seen so many people. Suddenly, she was snatched from the crowd and placed in front of an old man with a woolly white beard. So it was that the Greek merchant Charaxos bought Rodophis and took her into his household. After hearing how she'd been stolen from her parents in the north of Greece, he treated her more like a daughter than a slave. He insisted that she eat with him and bought her new clothes. He even gave her a little house for a garden running down to the Nile. Now, this angered his Egyptian servants, especially three sisters who lived in a hut made of mud and reeds. Old Charaxos slept a lot, and they were mean to Rodolphus behind his back. Rodolphus did everything to be friendly, but they rubbed dirt into clothes she'd washed and dropped sand into food she prepared. So you think you're better than us? They laughed. Rodolphus never said anything, but did the work again as she hummed to herself. Blow, wind, blow. Watch me bend, not break. Remembering Aesop, she made friends with the ginger cat and pet monkey that lived with Traxos. Down by the river, she talked with Hoppo and Hippo, who loved to play splashing games while cat and monkey played hide and seek among the reeds. If you're not sure what a Hoppo is, it's definitely not related to a hippo. A hoopo is a bird. If you look in the picture in a second, you'll see it's the bird with long curving beak. Down by the river, she talked with Hoopo and Hippo, who loved to play splashing games while cat and monkey played hide and seek among the reeds. They made Rodolphus laugh, helping her to forget her sadness. After washing the clothes, she would sing and dance for her animal friends, swaying this way and that. With my little song, I promise to be strong. With my little song, I promise to be strong. One afternoon, Traxos woke up, woke up early from a nap. When he didn't find Rodolphus in the house, he walked down to the river and they found her, dancing barefoot. He watched, hidden behind a palm tree. A few days later, Traxos presented Rodolphus with a pair of rose-red slippers embroidered with gold thread. Oh, thank you, she whispered. Never before have I seen such beautiful slippers. Soon afterwards... The pharaoh sent out an invitation to all his subjects to attend a feast at his palace in Memphis. Rumours spread that he was looking for a bride. The three sisters were excited. They'd dress up in their finest clothes and he would notice one of them. Of course, they said nothing to Adolphus or their master, who rarely left the house. Instead, they made up a story. Oh, our parents are ill. They need us urgently they cried with false tears. 
Taraxus agreed they should go immediately, and Rodolphus offered to do their chores. Every day, Rodolphus carried a basket of clothes to the river. She removed her new slippers so as not to wet them. One day, she was bent over the water when a vast winged shadow swooped over her. She looked up to see Horace the falcon soaring upwards with a rose-red slipper gripped in his sharp talons. For pity's sake, please bring my slipper back, she begged. But the falcon god of the sky was gone. Her animal friends tried to comfort her as she cried hot tears. Horace flew south along the valley of the Nile to the great palace at Memphis. Pharaoh Amasis was tired of the feasting. Indeed, some of his subjects had begun to quarrel. He was listening to their complaints when a small rose-red slipper fell from the sky into his hand. He glimpsed the falcon sweeping away. Horus has sent me a sign, Amasis declared. The owner of the slipper must be found. Messengers were sent east, west, north and south. The three sisters arrived at the palace just in time to see them disappearing in their chariots. How furious they were to learn that the feast had ended and the pharaoh himself was about to leave. When they heard about the search for the owner of a small rose-red slipper for gold thread, they looked in disbelief at each other, but said nothing. The royal musicians played their instruments as the royal barge set sail with pharaoh Amasis. A barge is like a really, really big boat. If you're a pharaoh, i.e. king of the Egyptians, you're going to have a really, really, really big, impressive barge. Word spread quickly. Day after day, young women from villages along the Nile hurried to its banks for their chance to try on slipper. But none had a foot small and slender enough. As the royal barge approached, Rodolphus held back to watch from behind some reeds. How amazed she was to see the pharaoh and her rose-red slipper in the hands of a royal servant. The three sisters jostled with others to try it on, but, once again, no one's foot fit the tiny shoe. Oh, this is a slipper of a child, the sisters complained loudly. Just then, Rodolphus heard a bird cry on the other side of the reeds. A bright blue kingfisher had accidentally caught itself in a net. Stretching forward, she gently untangled its wings and set it free. It reminded her of another kingfisher on another shore long ago. The pharaoh saw this and was curious. Why had this red-haired girl not come forward with the others? He signalled to his servant to take the slipper to her. As her foot slid in neatly, Rodolphus <laughs> laughed shyly. Pharaoh Amasis descended from his large barge to greet Rodolphus. Horus chose well. You are kind as well as beautiful, he said. The three sisters cried out, Great Pharaoh! She's just a slave! She's not even Egyptian! Waving them away, Amasis declared that Rodolphus would be his queen. It's said that Rodolphus and Taraxos shed tears as they said goodbye. Did she ever see her parents or Aesop again? We don't know. But they surely remained in her heart, and legend says that Rodolphus and her pharaoh lived happily together for the rest of their lives. So that was Cinderella the Nile by Beverly Naidu and Margin for Fire, and published by Tiny Owl Publishing. I hope you like that. I hope you like that. I think it's a nice change from the usual versions of Cinderella that I know. I like that it's set in ancient Greece and ancient Egypt at the same time. I like that it's an ancient Egyptian god that intervenes for Rodolphus. I like that it's not got a completely happy ending. I like that you don't know whether she finds her parents again or if she sees Aesop. But I especially like the idea that they live forever in her heart. I think that's a nice idea to have. Okay. If you enjoyed this book, I recommend you look up other books by Tiny Owl Publishing. If you like this book and you want to read it for yourself, then if you talk to your teacher, they should be able to ask for a copy from the school library service. I'm not sure if we have any in the school libraries, but the school library service might be able to get a copy for you. Okay, right. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care of each other, take care of your families, and hopefully see you again for another story time soon. Bye.